Hey there, so in this video, I wanna to explain to you kinda of how Google works. Google accounts, brand accounts, YouTube channels, it can be all very confusing if you're just starting out or even if you haven't had to touch this in a while and you wanna create another channel now. I just went through that myself. I think that I have a lot of experience from dealing with YouTube over the past five years, creating over 10 channels, I feel like, at this point. So there's a lot of different things that have changed and in 2025 here, uh, I'm just gonna give you the lay of the land. There'll be chapters down below if you wanna skip around and see something, but I guarantee you're gonna learn something here. Let's just dive into it. All right, so the very first thing is you're obviously gonna need some level of Google account. You probably already have a Gmail account. You might wanna get a Google Workspace account. Disclaimer, I am going to inject some opinions and recommendations in here, take them or leave them. But from my experience, I really do think that you should probably go to the Google Workspace account if you want to build this into some level of business or whatever. That's kind of a topic for a different video. I'll leave links down below to get a Workspace account if you want. If not, you can just use a Gmail account, but I would just think that if you wanna build anything out of this YouTube channel or you think it might turn into something, maybe consider doing it right, quote unquote, from the start because once you're all the way into this thing, it's very difficult to like move stuff around, move videos around and all that. It's just it's just a nightmare or just change different accounts and all that. So watch this video all the way through to understand how it works and then consider that afterwards, watch it again, et cetera. When you make that decision and you have a Google account, Gmail or Google Workspace, whatever, that you want to use, okay? Then you may get to the point where you want to add, you wanna go into YouTube. You might do that right away and you're like, okay, I wanna set it up. You may get a screen like this. It's this you know, terrifying red banner with these TVs, these old looking TVs and stuff when you try to go check out YouTube. There's a reason for this. It's happened to me several different times because I get excited and I wanna want just dive into it. There's a couple things that you have to do, especially on the Google Workspace side, maybe not as much on the Google side, but you know, if you see this, just search this up. I'll leave these links in the description. You have to just meet some requirements. If you're in Google Workspace, it doesn't trigger, it doesn't like set everything up until you make $30 or you, you spend $30 or you know, 30 days or something like that. Just wanna throw that in there because it's happened to me several times. It might ha might not happen to you though. Once you finally get access to YouTube, this is probably gonna be the first thing that you see when you dive into YouTube, okay? I have a test Gmail account here, and as soon as you jump in, they're gonna want you to make a channel, and you might wanna make a channel yourself. If you see this, okay, I would recommend just canceling for now. You can come back to this, but I'm gonna tell you to cancel this because I want to explain how this works. Once you click cancel, come back up to your avatar thing over here, click switch account, click view channels. What is going on here and why does Google make this so confusing and why have they changed this in the last five years since I've made all my different channels? I don't know, don't ask me, but I'm gonna explain to you what I've found here over the last few days of playing around with this. When you create a Google account, you automatically get a YouTube account in there, you get like, obviously it's a Google service, so you're getting the ability to go search for videos, watch videos, et cetera. When you go into the channel mode and you want to create videos, you have this default personal channel here. I think it's from like a legacy situation where you know you have one channel that was associated with your YouTube account and that's really all you had like way back in the day and then they had to expand that because people are building businesses off of YouTube, multiple channels, et cetera. We'll get into all that and that's why this kind of exists from, my, from everything I understand. There's a lot of problems with this though, okay? This is just a personal channel. It doesn't have the ability to have permissions or be shared or anything like that if you wanted to build this into a business. So the reason that I'm not gonna recommend that you cr end up creating and posting a channel, like posting content to this channel, is because it's just gonna limit you long-term. Even if you don't get to a massive scale, even if you just focus on like main videos or whatever, like just simple videos or whatever, it's not it's not gonna give you what you need. So if you think you could ever be at all serious about YouTube, I probably wouldn't use this as the channel. Instead, we wanna use a brand account. Now, unfortunately, okay, I actually have a video on my main channel from five years ago where I talk about this, how to create a brand account without a personal account. I'll link that below, but it's not gonna help you because you can't do that, at that you can't do it that way anymore. I don't know why, don't ask me, ask Google. The way that I have all my channels set up is literally just like that, the personal, has no channel. And then I have a brand account next to it, which we'll create here in a second, that is where I do all of my posting and actually all of my consuming. In 2025, however, you cannot create that easily. There is a backdoor way, I'll show you right now. But our mission right now is we want a second account, okay? How do we get a second account? Well, the only way to get a second account is through the first account. You have to create a channel here first on the personal one in order to get to the brand account stage. Right now, we don't have any brand accounts. I wanna prove it to you. If you go to this link, myaccount.google.com slash brand accounts, you can see that there's none listed here that will change in a second, but let's just dive in and try this here. So we have our channel. If we press create channel here, or if we go up here and click create channel, we find that you know pop up again. This all would have done the same thing. We're gonna click create channel. It's gonna put some stuff in here. If you're doing this, do not put the stuff that you want 
in here, okay? Like if you want this to say like, you know, I don't know, baseball bob or something like that, and you want to handle, do not in this personal one. If you don't want to do the personal way, if you want to do the way that I told you to do where you have a brand account, do not put anything that you want to use in here, okay? This is not the time to do that, right? So click create channel. I had to change some of the wording up there, but now we have a channel, right? So let's go back. If we go to switch account and we go to view channels, now look at this. Before, what did this say? This said no channel. Now it says no subscribers because we do have a channel. We just don't have any subscribers. What have we done here? We've utilized the personal slot of YouTube, the personal channel slot. Again, long-term, does that give us a brand account? Does that give us permission to do different things and all sorts of stuff? No, not really. And also, if we come over to advanced settings, we can see move your channel to a brand account. Interesting. Now, if we click this and we head into here, it's not really gonna help us because we don't have any brand accounts yet. And a very, very important point, this is the biggest point in the whole video, you can only have, as of right now, you can only have one channel in one brand account. It's kind of silly, it really doesn't make a lot of sense, the nomenclature is terrible, but it's just how it is, I didn't make it up. So here's what you should do. You should go back over to switch account, view all channels. Now you have a channel here, right? I know it looks similar, but now you have a channel. So you create a channel. This one, look at this, it doesn't have anything in here because it doesn't know because it wasn't creating it based off of your, your individual user or anything. This could be whatever you want. So what I would recommend to you is think about this, especially the handle, and put in whatever you actually want your channel to be. So in my case, I'm just gonna say cool tech tips. You can pick a handle. Obviously, there's a lot of branding decisions and stuff you have to make here. You can change these things. There's some limitations on how often you can change them, stuff like that. But just for the sake of this, you go in here and you make your decisions and then you click create channel. Now me doing this here, I get this little monkey. Again, I've seen some weird stuff when you're creating new channels. It just, it just don't get excited. It's kind of weird. It sometimes asks you to like log back into different things. It's okay. Generally, it seems to work. I'll prove it to you here too. Is if, you, if we go over to brand accounts and we refresh, we now see that there's a brand account here. Now that's really interesting because we didn't have that before. So let's go back over to YouTube and we're just back into YouTube here now. And now let's see what we got. So when we go switch accounts. Oh, wow. What is this? So now we have our channel that we were talking about earlier, the personal slot, no subscribers that we don't really wanna use. We, we don't wanna to post to that or anything, but now we have another channel, very important. Every channel after the first personal one is its own brand account. It has its own brand account. Think of it literally like this. You have one Google account, and then underneath that, you can have many brand accounts. And then underneath each brand account, you can have up to one YouTube channel. The reason that brand account layer exists is because whenever you end up sharing permissions or anything like that to your YouTube channel, you're really doing it at the brand account level. So for instance, let's log into this cool tech tips one now. Let's come back over here. Let's go down to settings. And you can see if we compared some of the settings that we had over in that personal one to this one, there's different things. The main one being you can add or remove managers. And where does this take you if you click this? This takes you over to your brand account details, which was just if we clicked, if we went back to our brand account thing and we went in here, it's the same page. So you're probably thinking this is pretty confusing. Honestly, I'm, I'm kind of right there with you, okay? I'm just telling you what I found. And again, the highlights here are the fact that you have one Google account and then you have a personal channel slot and then you have brand accounts. And you can have, I don't wanna say as many brand accounts as you want, but you can have multiple brand accounts and each singular brand account is associated with one singular channel. Now, the one other weird quirk that I will tell you is that you may be wondering, well, Mark, if there's one brand account to one YouTube channel, what if I change the name of my brand account or I change the name of my YouTube channel? Do they automatically sync with one another? Well, that seems like that would be a good thing, right? But no, it doesn't. That doesn't really make a lot of sense why it doesn't entirely, but uh, that's, that's how it works. So if we're over in our brand account here and we say view account profile, like this isn't even like incredibly that important. Like where did this come from? You know, maybe the Google Plus days or something like that. But point is you could come in here and you could change this name to like, you know, 12 or something like that, right? Like add something to this. Now our brand account, right? If we come out of here and we go to all this and we just say like brand accounts again, right? And we go find our brand account thing. And we just come back down here. Now, this says cool tech tips 12, like the actual brand account associated with that channel does. But if we come back into our channel and we view our channel, nothing changed here. We could actually change our channel name if we wanted to. We could change our name, we could change our name to literally anything else. We could change it to whatever. And we say publish. And then we come into our channel again, and we're gonna see that the channel name has changed. The channel name has reflected everywhere after a second, maybe. Okay, maybe give it a second there. But you could see it was up in the top too. It might take a second for that. But again, if we refresh here, 
has no effect. So again, I'm just trying to explain the weird infrastructure of all this because it took me hours to figure this out. All right, so that's pretty much it. To wrap up again, I would not recommend using your personal channel slot. Um, unfortunately, currently the way it is, you have to create one in order to get to the brand accounts and to give you the full way of doing things. There are some other instances that I didn't cover here. If you, for instance, have been building your personal channel up, you can replace, you can create a brand account and then move that over into the brand account. That's probably like a good thing for some people if they were found themselves in that situation. There's also one other big warning that I want to leave you with is that I had the idea to create the brand account and then potentially go back and delete the personal channel as we saw through that flow. When you go and you delete your channel over in your personal side of that, so you can get rid of that and just have like one channel that you're actually uploading to being the brand account, if you click that delete channel button, it seems to delete all of your like YouTube content associated with your account. There is a way to go into that brand accounts page like we saw, and there's like a place where you can, um, you know, see deleted brand accounts, and then you're able to restore it. So maybe that's a good thing if you ever have an issue there. But um, I just probably wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. I, I probably wouldn't let it go. I don't know why Google has made this so difficult where you have to literally jump through the personal thing and then create a brand account and it's only available to one channel. Honestly, it might change. So uh, it, as of October of 2025, this is how it works. If you have any questions, leave them down below. But I just wanted to share this with you because I went through a lot of weirdness trying to understand how this works and then I wanted to learn, try and share uh, this situation with you. So Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I will talk to you in the next one.